You just bought a USB-C cable because everything's supposed to be universal now. One cable for your phone, your laptop, your monitor, finally the future we were promised. So why does your phone charge at a crawl? Your external display refused to connect. Or worse, why do you smell burning plastic? Today I'll explain why USB-C isn't the standard you think it is. Like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand why identical looking cables do completely different things and how to never buy the wrong one again. Here's what nobody tells you about USB-C cables and why they're so confusing. USB-C isn't a standard. It's just a shape, the connector, not the capability. Buying a USB-C cable is like buying a car based solely on the fact that it has four wheels and a steering wheel. Could be a minivan, could be a Ferrari, could be a golf cart with delusions of grandeur. Outcome, the plug fits perfectly every single time. But what it actually does, that's a total mystery until you try it and realize your laptop isn't charging and your deadline is in three hours. The port looks identical and the cable looks identical too. But inside that innocent looking rubber coating, the wiring could be supporting five watts or 100 watts. It could handle USB 2.0 speeds from the early 2000s or 40 gigabits per second. Think of it like identical water bottles that contain completely different liquids. One bottle has water and keeps you hydrated while another has coffee and wakes you up. Another has hot sauce and ruins your morning completely. They all look the same from the outside. Same cap, same size, same label style. But what's inside makes all the difference. That's USB-C in a nutshell. The shape is universal, but the capabilities are an absolute free-for-all. You won't know what you got until you're already committed. Here's what actually matters inside that cable and what you need to know. Power delivery, or PD, determines charging speed. It's the watts that flow through the wire. If you want to charge a laptop, you need at least 60 watts. If you want it to charge fast and not take until the heat death of the universe, you need 100 watts. Cheap cables often max out at 15 watts. That's why your $800 phone takes four hours to charge and you're Googling, is my battery dying at midnight? The cable is throttling you and your phone is perfectly fine. The cable is just delivering power like a garden hose with 17 kinks in it. Data speed is completely separate from charging, which blows people's minds. A cable can charge fast, but transfer files like it's moving them by carrier pigeon. USB 2.0 cables. Yes, they still sell these in 2024 like some kind of cruel joke. Transfer at 480 megabits per second. That was acceptable when flip phones were cool and we all had chunky iPods. USB 3.2 or USB 4 can hit 40 gigabits per second. If your cable doesn't print the spec on the packaging, assume it's slow. Assume it's basically using dial-up internet while everything around it has moved on with its life. Video support is yet another completely separate thing. Most random USB-C cables can't do video at all. Zero. Nothing. You plug your laptop into your shiny new monitor, wait for something to happen, and your monitor just blinks at you like a confused dog. To carry video signal, the cable needs DisplayPort or Thunderbolt certification, which means extra wiring inside. Your monitor says no signal not because your laptop is broken, but because your $5 cable is just copper and prayers. Without that certification printed clearly on the box, video simply won't happen. And Thunderbolt? That's Intel's premium protocol, the overachiever of the cable world. It does everything at maximum speed, power, data, video, probably your taxes if you ask nicely. But Thunderbolt cables cost more because they're actually built to handle all that simultaneous chaos. It's like the difference between a regular Uber and Uber Black. Same app, same destination, very different experience. You get what you pay for. Except with cables, nobody tells you what you're paying for until it's too late. Now here's where it gets wild and you'll need a scorecard to follow. The USB standard has become so fragmented that even tech reviewers need spreadsheets to keep track. You've got USB 3.2 Gen 1 for starters. Then there's USB 3.2 Gen 2 to confuse you more. Plus USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, because why not? Don't forget USB 4 Gen 2 in the mix. And USB 4 Gen 3 for good measure. Then add Thunderbolt 3 to the pile. And finally Thunderbolt 4 to complete the chaos. It's like they hired a teenager to name these things while playing a video game and occasionally shouting out random words. The average person at Target just sees USB-C cable on the package and assumes it'll work. Spoiler alert, 
it will technically plug in, which is where the universality ends and the disappointment begins. This matters to you because you've probably blamed your devices for cable problems. Your phone charges slowly, so you assume the battery is dying and start pricing out a new phone. Your laptop won't connect to your monitor, so you spend an hour updating drivers and restarting everything while cursing technology. Your external hard drive transfers files at the speed of continental drift, so you figure it's just old. But nine times out of 10, it's the cable and the device is fine. The port is fine, but the cable is a liar wearing a USB-C costume. Here's your buying rule, and it's simple to follow once you know it. Never buy a cable that doesn't print its specs on the packaging. If the box just says USB-C cable with no other information, walk away like it insulted your mother. Look for USB-C PD 60 watts or higher for charging anything bigger than a phone. Look for USB 3.2 or USB 4 for data transfer that won't make you age in real time. Look for Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 if you need guaranteed video support and want everything to just work without a troubleshooting session. Certified cables cost more, but they cost less than replacing your laptop because a cheap cable melted into the port. And one quick test you can do at home right now to check your cables. Plug your phone into a known fast charger with your mystery cable. Use that one you got free with something or bought at a gas station during a moment of desperation. If your phone says charging slowly or takes forever to hit 50%, congratulations, you've identified the bottleneck. It's not your phone and it's not the charger. It's the cable. Swap it out for a certified one and watch your charging time drop like it remembered it had somewhere to be. Here's what you need to understand. USB-C gave us one plug to rule them all, but the cable makers didn't get the memo. Or they got it and decided chaos was more profitable. You're not dumb for being confused because the system is deliberately confusing. Cheap manufacturers print USB-C on the package and hope you don't ask questions. Premium manufacturers print specs because they want you to know what you're getting. It's like the difference between a restaurant that lists ingredients and one that just says food on the menu and wishes you luck. The problem isn't just cheap cables, though. It's that there's no visual difference between a 15-watt cable and a 100-watt cable. They look identical. They feel identical. One costs $3 and one costs $25. Until you plug them in and start a stopwatch, you have no idea which is which. It's like if some $20 bills were actually Monopoly money, but looked completely real until you tried to use them. The shape promised universality, but the reality delivered a guessing game where you always lose the first round. To recap, USB-C is a connector shape, not a performance standard. Identical plugs can deliver wildly different power, data speeds, and video capabilities. Power delivery determines charging watts, and you need at least 60 for laptops. Data speed is separate, USB 2.0 is ancient. USB 3.2 or USB 4 is what you actually want. Video requires DisplayPort or Thunderbolt certification, which most cheap cables skip entirely. Thunderbolt cables do everything but cost more because they're actually built for it. Never buy a cable without printed specs and test your mystery cables to find out which ones are secretly useless before they let you down mid-presentation. So here's the real question. If one connector was supposed to simplify everything, who benefits from keeping us confused? Should there be legal requirements forcing manufacturers to clearly label what their cables actually do?